Hello everyone, this is Bentley from Kent, Washington. We're going to do a few updates. Uh, first, we're going to start with the Leopoldi Angels. This is in the morning right when I gave them their food. And you can see that kind of fine dust of flake that I've kind of ground up real real tiny up top for them to eat. Um, but as you can see from one of the last updates, they are nowhere near as shy as they used to be when they first came in. Um, and you'll probably also notice that I did a pretty major overhaul of a lot of the plant growth in this tank. Um, this had a, just a ton of Rotala really taking this thing over. It was shading out a lot of plants. Um, I had to do a major overhaul over the weekend just because it was, it was limiting their, the swim space for the angels. Oh man. And you can see at this angle, that beautiful red in their fins, that kind of olive tint that's light to their body, those beautiful bars. And then if you look really carefully at certain angles, you will see blue in uh, the kind of the cheek area along the gill plate there. But anyway, um, the, the plants had really gone nuts in here, and I got a few new plants as well, um, just because they, they went a little too haywire. I let them grow a little too long. I just, a little negligent. I was a little too busy for my own good, um, and let them just shade out and, and really kill a lot of stuff. And it was also causing uh, some buildup of algae at the very top layer, because they were creating this giant mat of no water movement at the very top of the water, right underneath the light. Uh, just just a combination of uh, of me being too busy and then also like every time I would look at it and be like, I really need to trim that, but I also need to change water on all of my tanks and that's going to take me like five to six hours and I need to get that going and I, I really need to carefully monitor because I have a lot of small fish in so many of these tanks that I don't want to like have a fish go up the tube or something like that. Uh, so here's some new plants that I got in <laughs> once I, once I uh, fix the focus here. Uh, so I got a tissue culture of Hygrophila pinnatifida. Um, I, I really like this plant, and so far it's doing pretty well. Uh, big shout out to Aquaria in Bellevue, which is an ADA store that I got this from. And then this is a Bacopa Caroliniana Saffron Red, and you can see a couple of the very top leaves are starting to get that red color in. Um, as you know, I have a yellow flame variety. Uh, so I, Saffron Red sounded really fun. I want to try it out. And then there's some uh, Crypt Balance. <laughs> I finally decided to turn off that light behind me uh, so that it would be easier to see. And as you can see, I really need to clean the glass on this thing. Um, and that'll happen over the weekend while I do some water changes and stuff. But uh, so here's a bunch of new stuff that's in here. And then in the back, um, I have some leftover clippings of my Rotala mini butterfly right there. Uh, I've been holding them down with a weight, kind of like what uh, Corvus Oscan or Joel likes to do, to let a few roots grow out of the bottom part there before actually planting them down. Uh, and then here's a like, single stem remaining of my Ludwigia crystal. It got shaded out really bad, uh, but I can recover from a single stem and you can see like even this, this Erio Vietnam got really shaded out. Uh, some of my Cryptsporellus red tiger got shaded out and melted back a bunch. So um, a lot of, a lot of work that I have to do because I slacked is, is the only way to put it. Uh, and then kind of coming up the top here, just look at this Ludwigia repens. This is one of the few plants that was in there that was just doing like absolutely amazing. Uh, and I just love the color on the few Ludwigias in here. There's, uh, I think if I remember right, it's like Ovalis that's in the back here with the Repens. Um, but just lots of great color on the Ludwigias. They're doing great. And and slowly over time, the rest of this tank will start doing great too. And I'll give you some updates as that happens. Uh, so then let's let's talk about another plant tank. And let's look at the tank where the Kochu Tetras are, which is this is my, what I call my plant for profit tank. It's been in a lot of videos. Um, and as you can see from this little shot, this is a basically dead center of the tank right as I was feeding the Kochus, which is why they're so frantic and going all over the place. Um, you can see how overgrown this thing is. Uh, and it's mostly two plants that are there toward the left-hand side and go further on the left-hand side of the tank. I'll pan in a minute and you'll really see it. Um, I've, I've been doing enough to keep stuff alive and not letting things get really shaded out or ruined in this tank. But this is like kind of my big weekend project. I have a ton of trimming that has to be done. We'll kind of pan up over the top and you'll see like just tons of Rotala Eni and Ludwigia Pantanol. Uh, there's some Bogostamon Kimberly and some Alternanthera Rhinechii that are coming out of the water. I just need to trim all that stuff back, get it all fixed, um, create some bundles that'll float, that'll sit in some plant weights for a little while. Uh, and then of course, replant some of the stuff that I'm gonna keep just so I can rebalance the growth out in this tank. Um, reset it a little bit got this uh there's Renekii mini variegated you can see it was it, it shaded out so it's not showing great red up top yet or the variegation at all 
Uh, and then there's like that, that boost on the other hand, which loves low light, looks fantastic. And then this right here, right up front, we have a couple stems of Ludwigia senegalensis, which is a really cool plant. I've been really focusing on making sure that has plenty of light because it's, it's a big light hog kind of plant. But once you do have it right and it's happy, it looks just amazing. Uh, and then back here, here's some of the leftover Rotala uh, macranda that was in the other tank that I pulled out and I put over here just to kind of save some of it. Uh, and then you can see like some Pogostamon erectus and Heidelberg and a few of the other plants that are in this tank. This will get a lot cleaner and then I'll shoot some extra video uh, just so you guys can see the difference between this massive overgrown jungle here, which some people love that jungle look. I occasionally love that jungle look, but when I'm trying to do uh, plant grot and keep it clean and make sure that every plant is getting exactly what it's needing, uh, this is, this is again, my schedule making things very hard and me slacking a little bit. So a little bit of work and this will go back to, to being amazing. Uh, plus it's the summer. So plants don't sell quite as often, a lot like most stores. Um, you know, your business goes down when you're doing it in the summer because people want to go out in that nice weather and not necessarily work on fish tanks. Um, so it's not so bad. Uh, so let's, let's do the guppies. We got to have a weekend guppy fix, right? I put some rapashi in, as you can see, and they, this is at the start. I kind of wanted to watch and watch them slowly figure out that it's in here. This is only the second time I've given them rapashi. The first time, it took them a little while, but once they figured it out, they started going real nuts for it. Um, for a lot of you, <laughs> there's actually quite a few uh, brand new subscribers as of uh, basically Friday the 20th um, that all came over from Lucas Bretz, and you probably saw him do uh, either live or maybe you watched the replay of him unboxing some of these guppies. Uh, I sent Lucas four pairs, and you can actually see a block they haven't even figured out it's over there yet. Um, four pairs of these guppies along with a couple of fry. Uh, Lucas and I have been talking, he really wanted these guppies. He's really into guppies as well as rainbow fish. Of course, he's an amazing shrimp breeder, uh, does lots of cool plants. And, and I worked out a thing. I just, I really want, part of the reason why I went to Lucas and I sent Lucas some fish. I've been really, really stringent. I've had a lot of people ask me like, hey, are you selling those fish? And my answer has been basically no. Um, and I'll explain that in a second. But the reason why I went to Lucas, this line comes from a gentleman named Luke Roebuck, which if you're a big guppy nerd, you know Luke Roebuck. Now, if you don't know Luke Roebuck, um, he's really cool. Look into him a little bit. He's got a really awesome story, but he's basically an international fancy guppy association judge. He's a master guppy breeder. He's had several lines that were championship lines. And this is a line that he developed called the Blue Hawaiian Moscow Guppy. It's a combination of some Hawaiian bred blue guppies and traditional blue Moscows that created this just vibrant blue color. And occasionally see some little tints of green in the tail, some very, very dark blues mixed with bright blues. You can see some sky blues, just the, an amazing blue in a Moscow style guppy that typically you don't see anywhere else. And he passed away a few years ago and this line has kind of disappeared. Um, it took me a while to find it. I've got a great video. I'll link at the end of this that tells you kind of the origin of where I got these particular guppies, uh, which hello, Leanne, glad to show you your babies. Glad to show you they're still doing great, but uh, back to Lucas. <laughs> um, I, I sent these to Lucas because I don't want this line to die. Um, people like Lucas who are incredibly skilled and, and dedicated breeders can help make sure that this line never disappears. And while I'm not an old guy, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not, I'm not one of those guys who's like, uh, say the, the great, like a Rosario LaCorte or something like that, who's been doing it just forever, but I've got a little bit of experience. Um, I want to make sure this line never goes away, which is why this particular 140 gallon acrylic, so long as I have this guppy colony, which I intend to have it for a very, very long time, because I absolutely love these guppies. This is their home forever. I'm never going to change this tank. You, you, you probably could not make me change it. Um, you can see some of the guppies that haven't figured it out. They're so used to my hand coming in to feed them and putting flake directly into the water that having the rapashi drop in there, they're, they're kind of almost clueless. They're sitting there waiting for my hand to come in with me standing at the tank where the rest of it, you can see this horde is just slowly growing and growing and growing and figured out. And you can see all that blue whipping around of those boys and the little hints of blue in the female tails too, which is amazing. You know, not always do you get a little color in the, the females, but uh, this, this line's never going away from me because I just don't want it to disappear from the hobby. It's such a unique guppy as far as a bluefish, which I I like Lucas, absolutely love bluefish. The, uh, 
<laughs> you know, blue is my favorite color by far. And if you can give me a beautiful blue fish like this, that's going to be really hard for me to say no. Unless it's salt water, because I don't want to do salt water. Uh, <laughs> you know, I just, I love fresh water too much. And, and salt's like such a different animal that maybe eventually we'll do salt water. But for now, fresh water is my thing. Uh, but the, this line is really important to me. So a reason why it went to Lucas, I gave him, like I said, four pairs and some extra fry. He's somebody I know will help ensure that this population in some are completely different. You know, he's in the middle of the country where I'm on the West Coast in the Seattle area. It'll make sure that this line survives and stays around and gets to more and more hobbyists. And eventually, yes, I, I will start sending them out to more people. But for now, like I, I've told people like kind of casually, I, I won't sell fish until I have a thousand fish in this tank. And that sounds insane. I know, <laughs> but I just, that's kind of the, my, my dedication of how many I want to make sure my colony is good, is stable, and that I'm doing a good job with them, that I'm making sure I'm providing everything they need to be healthy and successful before I ever think about going like, okay, now maybe I'll sell a few fish, or maybe I'll send a few to, to this person over here who, who I like and who's a good friend of mine or something like that. And now admittedly, there is a, a small group of these other than Lucas that have gone to another friend here in Washington. They're actually over on the coast side. So they're they're over what we call the peninsula side of Washington. And that, that is literally my CYA, as Gary likes to say, to cover your you know what. Um, and that's just a matter of like, I wanted to make sure just in case, uh, which hopefully this never happens, but you know, some catastrophic event, like a, a major power outage where I lose power to my house for many, many days, weeks, even um, something like that, that there is someone else who has these fish local to me that I trust um, just, just absolutely in case. Now the likeliness of that happening is really low. I, I haven't had a power outage in this house in a long time. Um, you know, I, I generally have a very stable power grid in Seattle. So it's, it's being overly paranoid, but it's one of those things. If you have friends that you really trust, especially like local club members, I'm fortunate enough to be a part of the Greater Seattle Aquarium Society, which is amazing. If you have people that love the same fish as you, always, always have a CYA friend. Have, you know, split things between each other to make sure that just in case something goes horrifically wrong, it's not gone for good. Uh, that's it. That's kind of it. I just wanted to show you guys a little update on the guppies. Um, again, huge thanks to Lucas Bretz um, just for sending a few people my way, being able to see these guppies. I'm really looking forward to watching what he does with these fish and how successful he is because Lucas is so good at this stuff that I imagine it won't take long before, you know, my, my big colony is getting outcompeted by somebody like Lucas who's just so much more efficient and also, you know, doesn't have a, a kind of crazy schedule like I do right now. Uh, as always, everybody, thank you so much for watching and for tuning in. Uh, if you have any questions, shoot them down in the comments. If you'd like to know more about these particular fish, maybe you want to know about some plants uh, or, or maybe you, you really want to like beg and plead to get on a list for when I do sell some guppies to, <laughs> to maybe get some. Um, I, I laugh a little bit because just because I'm so stringent on not selling them um, because these are more an appreciation for myself than anything else. Um, but, you know, shoot it down in the comments. Let me know what you like. If there's something else you'd love to see out of my content or some of my tanks, please let me know. I'll be happy to make videos about that stuff for you guys. As always, stay awesome.